All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rukakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you, brothers, that are pushing this word out in truth and sincerity and in charity. I'm the brother Abraham from the camp here in GMS Chicago. Coming to do another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit. Lord willing to be edifying. And uh, this lesson is going to be on uh, this video. Uh, how Steve Harvey prays. And this is Steve Harvey. He's a YouTube channel. And um, just going to go into uh, this video. How off it is. Bring out the scriptures. All right, bring out bring out some uh, precepts, bring out some truth, and back it up with the, the precepts, man. Because uh, this this word, as it says in Isaiah eight and twenty, if, if they speak not according to this word, is because there is no light in them. Okay, so <clears throat> you need you need this this uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, which is the truth, right? And how John seventeen and seventeen it says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay, so this word from these holy scriptures in the Bible is the truth. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, play this video. It's a little bit less than five minutes long. All right. Um, we'll see if we'll get to the whole video because, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and play. I want to tell you about a guy. You may know him for his comedy. You may know him for his mustache. But today, I want you to know him for his religion. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey, stand-up comedian, entertainer, television host, family man. But most importantly, I happen to be a man of faith. Steve is a very successful guy. He has made more money than he ever thought. He has become more famous than he ever thought. But at the same time, he managed to keep his relationship with God closer than ever. Why did you not lose faith as you became more successful? If I could make myself successful, I would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> I would have skipped so many of the lessons I had to learn. But it's not that, it's a process. Success and happiness is a process, man. And in this process, I was very aware of the amount of faith that was needed. And as a matter of fact, it really took more faith than I even thought I had. Oftentimes, people who are religious think their religion is right and everybody else is wrong. There is only one way to God. But Steve's faith is unique because it's really not about that. There's no one, one way to heaven, no one way to paradise. It's like television. Now it's over 800 channels of cable and they're all pretty entertaining. So I'm pretty sure, man, that to get to heaven, there's got to be more than one route. Because somebody watching another channel or taking another channel than you, they still getting entertained, and they probably still getting to heaven. That was probably one of the dumbest analogies I ever heard in my life. All right, but let's go uh, ahead and bring some scriptures out for some things that he said. Let's get um, Matthew's 19. Um, damn. I'm just get to the point. Verse 23, it says, Then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle and for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And why is that? Because uh, just like um, if you read up a little bit in this chapter, right, there is a poor man, uh, not a poor man, but a rich man, Salakia, who had many possessions and wanted to know what was uh, the answer to get everlasting life. 
And Yahweh Shai broke it down to him. Keep the commandments, you know, love the Lord with all your uh, soul, mind, body, spirit, strength. All right. Uh, honor the father, thy mother, you know, just paraphrasing the commandments. And he said, I've been doing this since my youth up. All right. So then Yahweh Shai said, go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. But the man went away very sorrowful because he had many possessions. Okay. All right. And uh, just get another one. In Matthew 13 and 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns. Is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. Choke the word. And he becometh unfruitful. Right. So the parable of the seed. And the sower and the seed um, so that fell on good ground and the seed that fell on bad ground and stony ground. All right. Or. Or um, the, the seeds that fell amongst the thorns. All right. So some fell on good ground. Those are going to be fruitful. Right. Those are the ones that kind of receive this word and they're all the way into the end. And eventually be saved. And then there are some who, um, you know, uh, they receive it with gladness. But you know what? Once you start getting uh, affl affliction and start getting tempted, you're like, oh, no, man, this ain't for me. Then he's out. Then you got those that, um, you know, fall from the love of this world and the pride of this life. All right. Which is pretty much uh, him, man. Steve Harvey. Which is, uh, uh, you know, he's really, really successful, really famous, and really rich. All right, but you think he's going to give all that up to come and serve the Lord and humble himself? I don't think so. All right. So, um, let's go ahead and get... He said there's many ways to enter into heaven, right? Let's get John 14. John 14 and verse 6, it says, Yahweh Shai saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. All right, so Yahweh Shai is that doorway to the Father. To salvation. Alright. And you can't enter in any other way. Alright. And you're watching 800 channels of TV. It's not going to get you there. Okay. So let's get um, the book of John chapter 10. And verse 1, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Alright, so there's only one way in. Alright, and that is what? Through, um, you know, Matthew 7 and 2 Ezra 7. All right, that straight gate, that narrow path. All right, that's the way to enter in. How else are you going to receive the inheritance, man? Okay, let's, let's get that. Let's get that in Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Um... And verse 13, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Alright, so um, there was also a comment that I seen that was a good comment. Uh, right here, one way to heaven, there's a million ways to hell. Which there's no such thing as hell, but, you know, the condition... It's, it's all uh, a condition. 
Alright, heaven and hell are conditions. Alright, so that million ways to go into destruction is broad. Alright, that's where the majority of the people are going to go and that's uh, what's their lot, man, at the end of the day. Because there's a predestination. Okay, the first fruits, the ones that created uh, this earth back in uh, Genesis 1 and 1, the Alachayim, all right? Verse 14 in Matthew 7, it says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. All right, he was talking about like, all those people that are watching those channels are most likely going to enter into heaven. Sorry. All right, now let's back this up with Second Ezra seven. Okay, Second Ezra seven. It's six. There's also another thing: a city is builded and set upon a broad field, and it is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow, and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there was, there were a fire on the right hand and on the left, a deep water. Okay, so this narrow, straight path and not as in straight as in, not crooked but straight as in the position of difficulty. Okay, it's not gonna be easy. And one and one only path between them both even between the fire and the water so small that there could but one man go there at once if this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance if he never shall pass the danger set before it how shall he receive this inheritance and i said it is so lord then said he unto me even so also is israel's portion all right, so not everybody is going to go into heaven. And not all Israelites are going to uh, go in the first uh, first um, trip, the first go-round. Okay, because uh, two-thirds of our people are prophesied to be destroyed on this side. And then eventually come back in the kingdom of heaven with a, a righteous um, heart. All right? Now let's get another one to back this up. Let's get Acts um, 14 and 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in their faith that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. All right. And that's just the way it is, man. All right. We, we want that reward. We want that uh, recompense, man. Well, guess what? You got to work for it. You got to go through something first. All right? Now watch 800 channels of TV like Steve Harvey said. All right, so let's continue. This isn't just talk. Steve lives by these words. He has three sons. Two of them, he gave them Christian names like Broderick and one of them, he gave a Muslim name, Ali, as a sign of respect and appreciation for the Muslim religion and the Muslim culture. I named him Ali because I knew, I knew then that he might be different. I knew. And you have no problems with it. No. Because when you come here, you understand Islam is a religion of peace. Why you got a problem with peace? It's just a name, but it's a big step to showing respect to people of other cultures. What Steve did reminds me a lot of this mosque. This mosque in Abu Dhabi belongs to people in the Islamic faith, but as a sign of tolerance to the churches next to them, they renamed the mosque to Mary, Mother of Jesus Mosque. Can you imagine a mosque with the name Jesus on it? Yeah, the world could use a little bit more of that. It's just a name, but it's a big step to showing respect. You know, when I named my youngest son and I gave him the name Ali, I never really 
understood exactly what I was doing. I had a feeling about it. But now when I look at this name right here. Alright, this is enough. I've had enough. Alright, but, you know, even the people in the comments, man. They, they, they don't even <laughs> like this one. It says, I'm glad a lot of viewers see through this. It is written, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man may come unto the Father, but except by me. Vanity, vanity, it is all vanity. Riches, fame, things of this world, all vanity. Steve has believed a lie. Don't fall for it too. Alright, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Enter by the narrow gate, for the wide is the gate. And the way is easy. That leads to destruction. Alright. So these people. They see right through this man. Alright. And they might not. Because they, they're saying Jesus and stuff like that. And even they know this is all bullshit. Alright. But this is all to lead uh, Israel astray man. The leaders of these people cause them to err. Alright. So um. Let's get this, cause these are, that's a bunch of confusion. Um, let me see what is it? Amos three and three. Can two walk together, except they be agreed? Nope, they cannot. All right, either you got this faith or you got that faith. And guess what? It's not gonna work out at the end of the day. All right, just like uh. In, in Israel, they try to do all these stupid unity camps when they all got different doctrines. What? Alright, that is confusion, man. And the Most High is not the author of confusion. Alright, so let's get uh, Psalms. 82 and uh no it's not this one I'm gonna uh, word search it up Psalms 96 and five it says for the for all the gods of the nations are idols but the lord made the heavens okay so all these other nations are they got their own idols but guess what the lord yahweh is the creator of heaven and earth all right he's the big boss the king of kings all right the god of gods Let's see if I could find that. Um, I know it was in Psalms as well. Just bear with me a minute. Damn. There's a lot of pieces for this. Um, so let's see. Well, this is a good one. This is Psalms 95 and 3. For the Lord, Yahweh is a great God and a great King above all gods. Alright, let's see. Alright, yeah. So, uh, I mean, that, that proves the point as well. Let me see if I could uh, find it one more time. Okay, yeah, yeah, this one's it. It's Deuteronomy 10 and 17. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty 
and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh rewards. All right, so how about Shimei Shai? Is that is that power of man of, of everything? He is, he exists. All right, and he has a chosen people, the Israelites, the twelve tribes, which today consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. All right, and also you, uh, Israelites that might look like other nations. All right, but your spirit and blood goes back to the uh, patriarchs, twelve patriarchs, man of, of Jacob. All right, and even then, there's a election in that. So no, you can't. There's there's no million ways to go to heaven, man. All right, so uh, I'm gonna end it there. Lord willing, it was edifying, and as always, all honor, glory, and praises goes to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rukakudash, the oneness to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Until next time, Shalom. All.